There are definitely a wide range of use cases which you could talk about, but two of my favorite which make a huge sense to a traditional Accenture client, which is a typical large organization, where be one would be around credit. I know Josh talked about it, but I see huge demand of credit, especially in the specialty finance area. So things like auto finance. There is a huge demand from all of the large car dealers who have a huge, apart from the dealerships, they actually have a big auto finance business, you know, you name, you know. BMW Finance or Audi Finance. These guys are interested in using open banking to provide real-time personalized credit to their customers. And it goes one step further. You can actually cross the ups and you can look at the customer's open banking data and choose the right car for them. And that's brilliant experience. So a customer comes into the shop and says, I want to buy this. And you could say, oh, you don't have, you can't actually make the necessary monthly payments to do that. Or you can actually afford a much better car. And you know, this is what we can offer to you. And that, that will be a game changer in terms of the right customer experience and being able to sell the right product to the right customer. The other thing which we are seeing, which has a huge demand is, is in corporate. There is gone are the days when you, when, you know, corporates connect to bank using host to host connections. You know, that, that is, that is, that, that is a thing of the past. I'll, I'll, I'll tell a story without naming this, naming the actual bank. So there was a lot, there was this large universal bank, and this is one of my favorite stories, which went to Facebook and said, we want to do transaction banking with you. And the first thing Facebook asks is, we only deal with APIs. Do you have APIs for us to connect into and do banking? And the bank said, no. So the Facebook said, you know, I know you are one of the largest banks, but sorry, we can't do business with you because we only work with partners who do APIs. So this is the real, real demand in the, in, especially in the digital economy where all of the fintechs and the digital unicorns, et cetera, are demanding from banks that they produce the right set of APIs which can produce instant connectivity. User experience and, and journeys are key. Uh, one of the reasons why I think uh, payment APIs have not really caught on is all of the challenges which Manit talked about. That experience which you get with open banking payments is substandard than what you get in the market. Google Pay, Apple Pay, you know, contactless is far more advanced, sophisticated, superior, and, and truly customer-centric in every sense. Why would I use open banking payment payment APIs? So clearly, you know, there is there are gaps and, and holes to be plugged on that space. Uh, second thing I think is uh, there is a there is still too much of fragmentation even within countries even you know even you know we talk about PSD two but PSD two is actually you know Poland group stat you know it's the Polish API standard there's six or seven different standards proliferating around creating too much of confusion around the market and making it really difficult for the fintech to actually do stuff with it because it's expensive to you know do seven integrations as against one where you have a consistent standard so fragmentation. Last and the most important thing and, and uh, is for me is customer education. I don't think the big banks are just doing enough to educate their customers about what is open banking and you know, what are the benefits for them, why should they be involved in it. Uh, I remember back in 2017, I actually had to call up my bank and say, hey, I'm, by law, I'm supposed to actually get a letter or an email from you telling me that you know, this is open banking and this is what my rights are within the space and why haven't you done so? And then they send me a letter within two days and we are talking about a big high street bank. So, so this is the reality of you know, financial services. They have, I, I, I hear that the top nine UK banks have spent 1.5 billion in building tech to support open banking, probably to modernize their legacy infrastructure. But they haven't, I don't think they've even spent one hundredth of that in customer education. Open banking to succeed needs, you know, digital identity and some sort of, you know, interchangeable capability within that space. Uh, I mean, if, if I take an example of, you know, a large global bank whom I work whom I with and I have accounts in multiple countries, the open banking journey even within a single bank is fragmented because there is no common standard around digital identity. It just doesn't exist. You know, if, if, we, if we have login with Facebook and login with Google, why can't we have login with my, you know, login with a Barclays or a NatWest or HSBC or a Revolut? This is entirely possible. And why is that digital identity not supported or accessed across the entire ecosystem? One of the things that all of us are expecting to happen is open banking graduates on to open finance, graduates on to open data. So 
and the implications of that are, I think, boundaries between industries will blur. You won't be able to make out that this is a bank versus this is a big tech versus you know this is somebody else. What you will see in five, six years time, and because of the plethora of APIs and data points available, is is people who dominate. You know, it's 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 organizations who you know focus on that customer experience and provide the right journey who will dominate and own the customer experience, and they will provide you know one stop platforms uh, in the in the ecosystem. And I think this will give rise to what I call as super apps in five years time. We are already seeing evidence of rise of super apps in Asia. So if you go to you know, Singapore, Thailand, you can see this. I don't know if you've gone to Singapore and use Grab. They do everything within Grab. You can do banking, you can do payments, you can do every everything you want to you know, order food, you know, order your cab. So it's, and I think we'll see more and more of that. And I expect you know, organizations like Apple and Google to step into that space, uh, as, as, um, that space uh, significantly. Uh, the last point which I'm expecting to see, and you know, this is a slightly more near-term view, the, the initial wave has been all about APIs. There's been a huge noise in the market. Let's build the next API. There's been competition amongst organizations who can build a better API and all that. But I think you know, that stage will pass on and we'll, re we'll realize that APIs will be hygiene and the next battleground will be data. So the players who are strong on data, who know what to do with all of this open data which is coming out, will be the winners. 